Once was a land of woe and strife Where the people were bereft of hope They prayed to their gods of might and light To deliver the heroes of old Instead they got Heroes, did you hear the quotes in my voice Of moral ambiguity They may help or may not help you at all Depends on what's in it for them They kick and they punch and they maul and they smash They lie and they scheme and they burn and they slash Succeed or fail, it adds to the tale Dungeons and debacles starts now Hello and welcome to this episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast I am your host and Dungeon Master Kevin Thank everybody for joining us on Twitch and YouTube and the Facebooks Going around the table, Hannah. I'm Hannah, and I'll be playing Talia, the human rogue. And Blake. I'm Blake, and I'll be playing Juliet, the dragonborn eldritch knight slash wizard. And Shane. That's me playing Alexander, the human bard. And John. Hello. I play Lunadas, elven monk, the cute one. <laughs> and Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. I'll be playing um, a drow paladin named... Vicala. So the uh, last time on Dungeons and Debacles podcast, you found yourselves confronted with a puzzle at this uh, gaping chasm uh, in your path. Um, you went on a hunt to find some uh, polished stones that were magical. You placed them in this pillar that created a light bridge that allowed you to cross this uh, 200 foot chasm. Um, you continue to along the trail until you started hearing some uh, some flute music up ahead and um, some little sparkles of light near the ground so Talia decided she was going to stealth up and get a look and she discovered that this was some sort of large village of these small creatures she decided to go around the back end of it to see if she could find any human sized prints or humanoid sized prints in uh, order to see if uh, people had gone this way. Uh, she did find some tracks, but she also <laughs> uh, was confronted um, by one of these tiny little creatures as she tried to make her way back to the rest of the group. So, Talia, alone in the woods here, on your way back to find the rest of your party you are surprised when this flittering like a moth uh, is flying in your face at night and you don't really you know you can't see or react to it see what it is very quickly and you know you back up and your eyes adjust to uh, the dusk light here and you see before you this tiny creature that looks humanoid dressed in sort of like this uh, this green leather but it also has like uh, some elements of uh, some wood that's been fashioned into like a, a makeshift breastplate. Um, the figure appears to be female, and it has these flittering wings at its back. And it is currently probably about five feet away from you. You kind of you know, gain your composure, and, and you're getting a look, good look at it now. And it looks to you and says, Yeah! Um, Talia is going to say, oh, hi, uh, I'm sorry, we were looking for something, but we didn't want to disturb your village. Okay, what are you looking for? Uh, we were trying to follow some, some people who came back, came through here a while back. How far back? There's been people here. Our friends. Um, I, I actually don't know how far back. We just heard that a group of people came in here and we've been trying to find them. Well, listen, Butterlicker, you're going to have to be a little bit more specific than that. Glitter, come here! Well, they were... And then you hear that this creature yell that and out of the woods uh, comes flying another one of these creatures that uh, appears to be male and uh, carrying what looks to be like a, a tiny, like, little, like, great sword that's probably about three inches long. These creatures in themselves are probably about uh, four inches. 
in height. The creature flies up and is like, "The hell's going on, Sprinkles?" And uh, uh, they were they were carrying something uh, that we're looking for specifically. Glitter is going to look at you and then look at Sprinkles and it's going to say, "The fuck is this?" And Sprinkles is going to turn and is like, "I'm trying to figure that out." So you say you come here and someone had something you were looking for? Yeah. Um, we're, we're not quite sure where they went, that, though. We were trying to find them. Well, there's only one way to go, and that's through the village. We probably would have seen them. Uh, do you happen uh, to... Would you mind if... Because if, I, I went through the woods ahead to see if, if they went through here. We didn't want to disturb you, but would you mind if me and my friends just passed through? We won't, we won't disturb you any further after that. Hmm, that's not my decision to make. And then uh, uh, it's going to turn around and whisper to uh, Glitter here. And uh, they take a, a few moments and then uh, Sprinkles is going to turn around and say, uh, We can bring you to King Sparkles and he can make that decision. Um, okay. Uh, sure. All right. But we're going to keep an eye on you and keep your weapons off your daggers there. I, I will. Sprinkles is going to take the lead here and lead you over here towards the, the center of the, uh, the village here and Glitter's following closely behind and you look behind and you can see that um, Glitter has that great sword propped up on his shoulder and uh, just keeping a, keeping a hard eye on you kind of giving you the stink eye. So uh, you don't have to go very far because the while there's a lot of houses here that you're having to step carefully between because the the streets here maybe are only a foot wide foot and a half wide because it's a tiny village and as you walk through um you're going to see the the glow of uh, like candlelight coming from inside of these uh, houses and uh, there's kind of been a commotion started uh, it appears that somewhere out on the, the, the streets here, um, with some uh, of them playing music, it looks like they're kind of in the middle of something, but you, you don't know what it is. Um, but having this, you know, comparatively giant person walk through the village, even though you're probably only three or four uh, feet tall, or three and a half, four feet tall, is uh, drawing some attention. So you see some of them lift up into the air and start falling behind you and you notice that uh, there's sort of a crowd now and uh, you can hear them murmuring to each other you know, talking in high-pitched voices but you can't really pick out what they're saying. After only about a minute or so you reach the outside of one of the larger houses here and you see Sprinkles uh, stop and land on the ground and says to you, Wait right here! Okay. A few minutes later, Sprinkles exits this, uh, this tiny house and uh, this other creature who appears to be a little bit older, he's got kind of like a, a long red beard that hooks at the uh, bottom of it. And he has, like, these uh, fancy red-colored uh, robes on. He's going to exit the house and, and fly up to you about a uh, foot in front of your face and says, Who the fuck are you? Uh, I'm uh, no one of real, any real consequence. I'm just passing through. We didn't want to disturb your village. Um, well, you kind of have. Not intentionally, sir. I, I truly apologize. I heard you were out there skulking in the woods! No, no, not skulking. Just trying to find a way through so that we didn't have to disturb your village. Clearly that did not work. Uh, I was just wondering if me and my party could pass through. We won't disturb you. We won't mess with anything. We just wanted to, to get through this area. Uh, how many people? And what's your business up this way? Uh, we're looking for a group of people who who came through here, but uh, there's only six of us. Seven. 
Seven. Knife run. Wait, no. I was so six. Through. There are six of us. Well, I guess it'd be okay if you just come through and get on your way so we can go about our business. But we'll be keeping an eye on you. Absolutely, sir. I'm just going to go get them and we're, we're going to walk through and we're going to be on our way and you'll probably never see us again. Alright. Sprinkles and glitter. You go with them and... Titty sprinkles. And take Honeysuckle with you. These uh, two creatures uh, start falling in behind you and there's this other female creature flies up and uh, you see it pull this uh, bow from behind its back and knock an arrow and it's giving you this stink eye um I'm gonna just walk back south towards the party where they should be waiting okay they're gonna follow you um I'm gonna call out ahead of time and say like hey guys I got us passage through the village so that they're not like startled or going to try to attack these tiny little creatures because it'd be like death by a thousand cuts otherwise yeah I'd probably whip our asses alright so what are you doing um well I'm I'm gonna shout out that I got his passage to the village and see if anybody else responds I guess <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I've done my part <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I was hoping someone else we would we don't respond. have like a magical walkie talkie or something you could have been using <laughs> I just oh, remember uh, Juliet and uh, Alundas like leading the way for us all year, right? <laughs> um, do any of us hear Talia? Uh, <laughs> give me a perception check. Nine. Nat 20. A good way to start the session. Oh, we're all doing perception checks, is that correct? Well, I mean, that 20 is enough. Uh, Vic and Alexander definitely would have... Uh, heard Talia it's the elf ears that's the secret it's long for like the echo like dogs do I guess small things flock together <laughs> racist what do you mean by racist she's a human and there are elves and they're both small relatively sizest it's racist I mean sizest yeah <laughs> thank you reasonable enough what are you doing well, I suppose we should go meet up with her. That seems to be the only reasonable course of action. Uh, what's the worst that could happen? Actually, I, I know that already, so why don't we just, you know, make our way to her? All right. We can, um, do that, I guess. Uh, either way, never been a fan of these tiny creatures before. All right. Um... So are you coming out to meet Talia? Or Talia, are you still moving down? What are you doing? I was going to keep walking forward uh, until I saw them and oh. could say, Hey guys, maybe, you know, we're just going to go through their village. As long as we offer no threat, they will offer no threat. I'll meet her like halfway. Like not mad, you know, casually. Okay, so you're taking the lead out in front of this party? Uh, sure. I just, like, start walking, like, come on, guys, fuck's sake, get up. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty hard to go. I mean, if, if you're gonna let her, like, beat her along, she's just gonna die. Yeah, I thought we were like, heading there. little buzzing, guys. Alright, so... Okay. You come out to meet Talia, and you're gonna see these, uh, three, um, creatures. Uh, give me... Does anybody wanna do a, a nature check or a history check to try to figure out what these things are? Um, I'll do a history check. Juliet's seen lots of monsters in all those books. Talia got a 17 in a nature check. Yeah, Talia's been reading a lot more than Juliet, apparently. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I did an acrobatics I mean, check to see if I could acrobatic... Uh, your mind wraps around <laughs> the subject perfectly. All right, so uh, Talia, you would know from the the stories that you've heard in fairy tales that these are sprites. Oh, adorable! Pity sprites. As you approach Vic and the rest of uh, you, start following in behind. Uh, Sprinkles is going to see uh, Juliet, 
and start freaking out a little bit and she's going to pull her sword and then you see glitter and uh, honeysuckle come into this like defensive position and you hear uh, glitter yell holy shit it's a dragon it's okay she's she's peaceful guys it's okay they're all peaceful till they burn down your fucking village no, no, she's not gonna burn down your village. She, she isn't. It's not gonna do that because she's a nice dragon. You say that now, then the burning and the screaming starts. I, pr- I swear my life on it. Right, right, Juliet. You're not gonna burn down their village. Um, I mean, she's not a dragon. She's a lizard. So. And then they <laughs> see you, and they're like, <laughs> "Holy shit, Dark Elf!" And then they really what? like. <laughs> You uh, see Honeysuckle start flying back to the village. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm not a drow. I'm just a tanned wood elf. (laughs) Give me a deception (laughs) check. (laughs) That's a (laughs) ten. Sprinkles and uh, glitter are going to start flying towards you. As if to attack you. I'm gonna be like, like hands up. I'm like, what? I was being the sun way too long. We're not buying it for a second, Dark Elf. <laughs> Polly's gonna try to step in between and say, guys, guys, can we calm down, please? They're gonna fly back for a second and say, what are you doing with a Dark Elf? They're evil. What? Um, that's. Really presumptuous of you. <laughs> what, you've never heard of that guy, the, the ranger guy who was totally not copied over and over again by everyone? You mean Daryl? <laughs> yeah, sure, Daryl. Daryl the Dark Elf? Everybody knows about Daryl the Dark Elf! Yeah, he's my hero. Mm-hmm. Randrick, Randrick the. No. Oh, the. Double swordy guy. He's good. He went around helping people. That's what she's doing. She's yeah, just trying I... to make the world a better place for everyone. We're just trying to get exactly. through the village, guys. <laughs> yeah. We're not even like we don't even want to talk to you. We just want to get to the other side, and we won't bother you ever again. I'm gonna Aww. need a uh, deception check from uh, Lunados. This would go well. Eleven. <laughs> She don't look like no Daryl the Dark Elf to me! Well, that's because she's a Guys, lady. You can you can bring all of your warriors to line the streets. We just want to walk through. That's all. Okay. Just get through. Or we can go through the woods, around. We don't we don't have to go through your village. I was just seeing if there was a way around. We didn't want to disturb you. So, about that time, you're going to see um, Honeysuckle come flying back with probably at least two dozen of these sprites behind her. And they look like they are all armed with like long bows and uh, these <laughs> um, <laughs> and long bows. I'm gonna go towards the. I'm gonna go towards the group of sprites coming up and try and run towards and be like, guys, she's not a dragon. It's just a big lizard. She can't even burn down your village. <laughs> <laughs> Is that give a me challenge? a challenge. <laughs> wow. Give me, give me a deception, uh, persuasion check. God damn it, Shane. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can I um That's a twelve. Wait a second. Let me let me check something. I need to see if I even have this ability yet. I, s- I forget which level it is, but I don't know if I have it right quite in my arsenal. But as a bard I might be able to use my bardic inspiration on myself. Uh that's a bonus action. You might have to do that before you try and do a thing. Um I'm gonna go ahead and do something. Um, I'm gonna move forward, draw my sword out, put it in the ground, and look at those uh, little bastards and be like, before I pluck your little wings, I'm a very good person, and I think you should take advantage of that before this gets worse, okay? Honeysuckle is going to say, Did you just threaten me, you shit howdy? Talia is going to just put her fa- her palm over her face and say, For 
fuck's sake, can't we just be nice to people for once? So, what is it gonna be? Everybody look at me, I'm dancing crazy! And Luna Doss gets up on the car and starts dancing. Give me Great. a performance check. Let's hope I fail horribly because I think that would be fun. Uh, 17. Wow. Um, so you get up and start dancing and they look at you for a couple of seconds and then just go back staring daggers at, uh, at the <laughs> Uh, around this time, uh, King Sparkles is going to come, uh, flying up and you notice he flies a little bit slower because he's, uh, older and, uh, does he have a pot belly? Uh, no, he's pretty live. Sag yield man boobs. <laughs> So he flies up and is like, What the hell are you doing, you cuddle maggots? And, uh, you say honeysuckle. Cuddle, maggots? cuddle maggots. And, uh, honeysuckle's gonna say, They got a dragon and a dark elf. We must attack them now while we can, before they burn the village down. King Sparkles is gonna say, All right, all right, everybody, just settle down for a second. He flies up to, uh, you, Vicalia, and says, uh, okay. Why your sword out? Did you, were you planning on attacking us? What? No, I make food with this, and I help Talia's, um, <clears throat> art collection. Yes. <laughs> yes, oh, I'm shit. an excellent cook, and she's my assistant. Exactly. Oh, bullshit! What? Look at mm. me, I'm cooking crazy. Can I, um, try to intimidate him? Like... Uh, you can try. Like, uh, give me, like, an intimidating pose? Um, sure, go for it. What do you say? I, like, um, move my chest a bit, adjust my sword, and say, you know, we never tasted, um, sprites before. Alright, uh, give me an intimidation check. That's, uh, 16. <laughs> so, uh, every, all of these uh, sprites here, you say that, and their eyes narrow, and, you know, they start forming up in, like, these battle positions. King Sparkles is going to, to raise his hand up, and he's like, Okay, okay, just everybody settle down. Look, we don't want any trouble. You can pass through, but we're gonna keep our eye on you. If you make one false move, we're gonna murder the fucking lot of you. Okay, I mean, I'd be even willing to trade if you're willing to trade with a drow, that is. I don't wanna have anything to do with a fucking drow. Just take you and your party okay. and leave, and don't come back. Um, you, you got. Got it. We're we're going through right now. We're leaving. Don't. Definitely yep, leaving. We'll never through. see we're him ever nope. again. And Talia's gonna like, ha like just start walking as quickly as she can towards the village to hopefully get people moving so we can get out of here without someone Buttercup. dying. I'm gonna start pushing. Uh, freaking how the hell, hell do you even pronounce Vic. that? Vakala. I'm gonna start like pushing the call on the back lightly to get her to start going away towards the car. It's like, yep, yeah, it's okay, time to go now. Okay, alright. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a dude manhandling a, a, a draw woman. That, that's <laughs> never gonna go poorly. Oh, uh, um, uh, King, what was your name? Uh, Mr. Pixie? Katie Sprinkles. No, Sprinkles was gonna say. His name is the Honorable King Sparkles. First of his name. Um, Honorable King Sparkles. Um, I know this might be kind of odd coming from a great and mighty dragon, but um, we're looking for a pair of boots. Have you seen those anywhere? Uh, a special pair of boots. What? What? Made of leather? What do you mean special boots? They were brought here from outside, I guess. They're called the the Boots of Faydale, where I come from. And then uh, they're all of them going to start coming down and surrounding you after you say that and say, 
Yes, the boots have been through here. The elves brought them. And they also told us to be on the lookout for some... some non-elves that may be looking for them. I'm an elf. I wait. Yes, uh, he's in charge, and he's leading us to help find it. Um, I mean... We're, 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 sure we're the extra protection. Yes, exactly. Nothing suspicious about that. Uh, give me a deception check. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's an uh, eleven and a... Uh, <laughs> Crit fail <laughs> from a Luna dust. <laughs> the king says, He told us you may say something like that. Okay, before, before we get out of hand here, let's just be clear. If you start attacking us, the village won't be standing afterwards, and neither will you. And we're gonna keep on going. I would like to roll an intimidation check. Okay. This actually might go well. 20. Nice. <laughs> they start closing in on you. King uh, Sparkles is gonna raise his hand again and say, Stop! And he's gonna eye you for a few minutes and say, Listen! Their war is not our war. I don't care what you do. Just go. Leave us alone. Yes, let's go. And and not any more with things here. Yeah, I'm thinking at this point, talking's not helping you anymore. <laughs> I like this, guys. Yep, we are leaving. We are going away from the village to the opposite side and never seeing each other again. So they're going to clear yep. a space for you to uh, leave. Does anybody else want to say anything that's going to potentially fuck it up? No. 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 no not even a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm being flushed away. Like, to keep moving. I'm a lunar Das. has done nothing wrong this... Well, it failed a lot once. But I danced. I danced well. He I did. I want to mention that. And nobody noticed amazing. my really fancy cookery. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was so... Mm. Disrespectful from them. Yes, yeah, so we make our way through the village and hopefully we're not harassed and if we are, we are going to burn down this village. I'm just warning you right now, DM. <laughs> um Oh wow. <laughs> can, can the cart can, can the cart move through easily? Uh that's what I was getting ready to get to. So you make it to about this point right here, and uh Alunidos, I'm gonna need you to give me an animal handling check. Oh boy. Oh, gee. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, Luna, it's just killer with the animals. <laughs> 13. Alright, so, um, <laughs> you're moving the horses through here. You're not having a lot of trouble, but the, uh, the cart's kind of like, uh, behind the rest of the group. And, uh, you're making it through town here, and it is a tight squeeze through, uh, um, the main portion of town here on the streets because it's only maybe about uh, seven feet wide and <laughs> as you're bringing the cart through um, you are like looking around the sides and like you're almost like up against some of these houses and you get to a really narrow point here and you, you don't crush the house but you take down um, some uh, lawn ornamentation and a uh, picket fence that's outside of one of these uh, houses and crush Fucking it shit. and at, at this point all of these sprites have like gathered up here along the streets to, to see you walk through and you're going to notice that uh, all of them are armed even some of the younger ones they appear to be children uh, have like uh, either like some sharp twigs that kind of look like uh, toothpicks or uh, some things that look like pitchforks and, uh, I can pay for that. I can pay for that. Look, I, I have I have money. I have money here, and I'm going to place a gold piece in front of the house and and not try to fight. Uh, I thought you were gonna spread like sh throw a shower of gold and just cause even more property damage yeah. with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I considered it. <laughs> give, give me a uh, give me a, uh, a straight dexterity check as you throw this gold coin. Finally, something I'm good at. Uh, dex check, not save. 13. 
All right, so you you flip this. I didn't this. throw it. I I placed it. I I I made. I wanted to say that, but yes. <laughs> so you get down out out of the cart and put the the gold coin on the ground. Yes. Okay. Uh, you put that down, and as you do, all these tiny little sprites start spitting at you. Do I even feel it? Oh tiny? no, it's just like okay. smaller than water droplets. Really, <laughs> it's more the. Wow. Uh, the uh, the the shame of it all. You make it through the uh, the rest of the the village here, and uh, you notice that this group of sprites that were down in the initial like a uh, battle party to meet you is following you. They follow you all the way out of the village and uh, to this path to the north, and uh, you make it probably about you know fifty yards or so, and you look back. And you see that they're still there at the the, the uh, entrance to the path there, but they don't seem to be following you anymore. Okay, let's get away from here quickly, please. Mm hmm. Okay. I just keep moving. Okay. Now, um, there there is one one concern. Um, when we come back with the boots, they're not going to be very happy about that. I I don't think. Don't, don't worry about that. We we'll can swing wide out. around them. Yeah, and we can always make like sprite soup. I heard it's a delicacy. Not using my pots. You'll have to get your own pots. No meat in my pots. The well, they are plants, already... so that makes Did them it... like plants, right? You are what you eat. Yeah, I mean, no, sprites no. aren't meat. Nothing with faces that. will ever go in one of my pots, Talia. I mean, it's but, already been done. You might as well just keep that sullied one separate, and I'll just continue using it. Yeah. But you're going to have to do it. I love that that's the line. It's nothing with a face goes in my pot. <laughs> but I mean, sprites don't have meat, you know. It's all bone. Their personalities are garbage, but they still have them. I mean... Mm. <laughs> I could make you a pie. <laughs> oh, okay. That works. Little wings sticking out. It'll be, it'll be fancy. <laughs> are you saying this within your air shot? There. What's that? Are you, are, you, <laughs> are you waiting until you get further down the road to say that? Or you yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Jesus. <laughs> You're like There's 20 no feet way. out of the village, and you're like, well, fuck those oh, sprites. Boy. I want to eat <laughs> exactly. them. Exactly. All right, so uh, you exit out of the village here, and uh, it the path here kind of swings to the uh, northwest. Can everybody see the, uh, the map? Yep. Yep. At this point, let's see, it's probably been about, uh, what, 10 hours since you've had, like, a long rest or so? I will take your word for that. Um, so yeah, should, uh... you you make it about this far, and you figure it's probably been about ten or eleven hours since your last long rest. Do you want to camp here, or do you want to continue on? Can I uh, look around for like a good strategic spot to um, make him, like in the nearby area? Uh, yeah. Give me a survival check. Okay. Uh, twelve. Um, you look around, and for the most part, there is a the the path here, which is probably maybe fifteen to seven feet, seventeen feet wide. Um, you're not really seeing any clearings like off in the woods, but there are some spots where it gets uh, uh, the trees are less thick. Uh, you think you could probably uh, like pull off the the side of the road and find one of these areas, but. Uh, you don't know if it would be such a good idea to light a fire um, just because of the proximity of the trees. It's not really that cool here. It's kind of like that, um, like when it's getting on towards uh, like uh, the beginning of fall when you're in like September and you know you've got warm days and the nights get a little cool. It's like in oh, that, that nice, like, you know, 62 degree temperature, 65 degrees. I think you forgot I'm a draw. I prefer the dark, so it's okay. 
Well, even though you know you've been up this long, you're you're still noticing that it's still that kind of um, near dusk sunset kind of light going on from the east. Uh, the sun mm-hmm. still hasn't set or risen. It's like twilight, right? Oh uh, yeah, but you know you still got the 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 purplish skies with some clouds that you can see. Um, through the clearing yeah, here in the trees yep. and some oranges and some reds on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, like, I'm gonna look at the uh, rest of the group and be like, um, so, do you wish to take a rest? I get think some, we should. Um, shot I suppose. No reason not to, I guess. Alright, now I'm alone in this. I'm not um, saying that maybe this is too soon, but maybe this is a little too soon. Um, 12 hours is half a day, and I work 16-hour shifts, so... Yeah, it was very but... stressful. I need comfort food. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we have children here. You're working 16 yeah, hours a day at Evil? No, no, it's Town Guard. Oh, okay. That was, like, months ago. Yeah. Well, it's still fresh in my memory. <laughs> So, are we um, breaking out the pots or not? I don't know about you, but I always bivy whack under the uh, cart. Wait, what? what right. Why are you breaking out pods? Pots. Oh, oh yes. pots. You cook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thought like you were talking pots. about some sort of drow tent thing. No, <laughs> no, no. We don't have Tide pods or anything. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, cook, the cook doesn't get the reference to pots. Yep. <laughs> All right. So yet yeah, Luno will start cooking dinner. Okay. Made out of, you know, stuff, rains, vegetable stew, grass. No, don't be silly. <laughs> People can't eat grass. Give me a uh, survival check, Luno. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That's two crit fails. I mean, we have food in the cart. Okay. So it's not going to be fancy. It's just going to be a whole lot of, you know, basically porridge. All right. So uh, you camp down for the night. Is uh, is anybody want to do anything before you head to bed? Um, uh, train Abbott. Okay. Can I uh, join them in training Abbott? Absolutely. If Talia okay. allows it. Yeah, I'm going to approach Talia like, um, hey. Um, do you want help teaching that um, beast how to behave? I have my own, so I have some experience in these sort of things. Talia's gonna kind of put her arm around uh, around uh, Abbott and, and say, "Promise you won't try to eat him." <sighs> I promise, okay? If he... I like you. I mean, you know, I like your hobbies for a human, that is, you know. Okay, then. Um, I, and and uh, I'm trying to figure out what I want to work on him with. Um, I think I want to work on crawl. So teaching him to crawl along the ground toward me when I tell him to. Okay. Give me. Can I try and teach him to like sniff stuff and see where they come from, like my mom does. Like turn him into a tracking animal. Yeah, the way like that my uh, warg has that ability. I would say you can either do crawl, or you can do the other thing. But it'll take probably several training sessions for you to be able to lock that skill in to for him to be able to track something by smell hmm okay well I always have my work so mm-hmm. no oh boy can I help her like roll too um <laughs> I'll uh say yes and give her advantage on that so I'll let you take that 17 oh okay great <laughs> as a uh, helping action um, so yeah, you uh, work with Abbott 
and motion him to get down on the ground and then like crawl towards you so uh does it probably take more than like an hour or so and you think abbott has it down Excellent. so you can add crawl to his abilities like when um no one's looking like talia like uh doesn't look at abbott for a second i'm like i go down and i'm like near abbott i'm like who's a good boy <laughs> <laughs> Uh, give me an animal handling check. Oh, boy. Uh, that's a nine. <laughs> you can bite my arm. It's metal. It's just gonna hurt you. Not me. <laughs> and Abbott's gonna it's go adorable. get between Talia's legs. Aww, it's adorable when it's angry. It's got its hackles up and it's like pulled his his ears back. And at this point, Abbott's pretty large. He's uh, going on what, like six months old or so. So when I say he gets yeah. between Talia's legs, he like run, like takes his head and like wedges it between your knees and like tries to like crawl under. But you're basically riding a horse at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if a, a Mastiff at six months, I think it's about 100 to 120 pounds. He's never going to be sneaky. He could be sneaky. <laughs> I can work on it. Just never let him get in a fight because he's not like an animal companion. So <laughs> you're going to do all this training and he's going to get large. And the first time he like you know, loses control and gets into a fight and dies, that's it. Then you'll have Abbott too. That's, <laughs> oh that's where we turn to necromancy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that could be Talia's path to necromancy right there. Yeah. That's a good story arc, yeah. I mean, uh, we can always have him um, wear a cloak, like elven cloak. Make him sneaky like that. Death took my parents, but I won't let him take my dog. Talia <laughs> turns into a walking pet cemetery. Oh my, Jesus. oh my god, that's an yes. awesome concept. <laughs> they can necromancy with a bunch of dead pets. Bunnies and, but not even like cool like animals. They're all like bunnies and dogs and rats. Exactly. In yeah. a raccoon. Wonderful. You'll be like an undead Disney princess. Oh my god. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> all right, is anybody uh, doing anything else tonight? Uh, do you need to do any spells or yeah. anything like that, Juliet? Yeah, Juliet is going to copy down the last spell she's able to copy, or at least try to, um, Crown of Madness. So All right. I'll make my Arcana check for that, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Say 21. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. Copying that down. Fantastic. And then I do have one more thing that I would like to do eventually, but I will talk to you about that, Kevin, later. Um, just because it makes things more complicated. It's still within the realm of the rules. Like, okay. familiars are really annoying to figure out, so... Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they are kind yeah, of annoying. so I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did see, uh, if you watch the animated spellbook, uh, there was a good kind of primer on familiars that might be worth watching. Okay, Free plug there for out. animated spellbook on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you copy that down. Uh, anybody else want to do anything for the night before you settle down? I will play the bagpipes. And everyone appreciates it. Really? Talia actually does. It enrages uh, the sprites who think it's a cry to war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in the, uh, the sprite village... Uh, they go on alert when they hear this squeaking sound coming from the uh, the forest a couple miles Their away. Their heads start exploding. They shit themselves uncontrollably. All right. Um, so for the sake of brevity here, we'll say that uh, you camp overnight without any issue. You get all your abilities and spells and uh, hit points back. And you wake up the next day uh, refreshed. And by the day... We'll say that's just the amount of time that you uh, slept uh, because uh, there's really no change in the daylight here. All right, so okay. continuing onward. Okay. Pack up everything at the carts. Alunadas does his thing. I don't know what he does with the cart. If he like hauls it on his back and then puts the horses on top of the cart, 
or if the cart carries him, or I don't know. What's what's your method, Alunadas? I put stuff on the cart. I hitch the horse to the cart. Then I get in the cart and start driving the cart. Gotcha. Okay. It's very standard cart stuff. Just double checking. Some people do all sorts of crazy things with carts. Your mom does crazy things with carts. Ooh. You can't make your mom jokes. It's Mother's Day. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That is correct. Yeah, uh, fuck uh, you, John. Joke. You're the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Disadvantage on all chats. <laughs> yeah, that's Four totally session. it. Disadvantage on morality. Wow. Also, get I mean, to use my Mother's Day stuff. commercial again. Oh, it's been a year. Oh, yeah. All right, so um, you pack up camp, and you are going to travel uh, about another, we'll say, 10 miles or so, and the you see up ahead of you, the, the trees start to thin out, and there appears to be a large clearing here that looks like a dry lake bed, or river bed, and I'll just reveal this here on the map. So, huh. you come out into this uh, clearing here at the trees, and you're going to look around, and it looks like in front of you is this large hole in the ground, and it appears to be maybe about 40 or 50 feet deep, and all around it is this dry riverbed looking area the area that you're seeing here the crater itself is probably maybe a good 200 feet in diameter maybe 250 feet and uh, the most noticeable thing about it is and let me bring over this next map everybody see the map yep yep you can see where I'm uh, pinging right here. This is where you are. You're coming out of this uh, clearing here to the uh, to the southeast. And uh, down inside this crater, you are going to see what looks like a good maybe three dozen shipwrecks in this, uh, this crater in the ground. They all appear to be like river boats with like kind of small masts with uh, um, what looks to have been like some sails but they've long since rotted away and a lot of these shipwrecks here look really really old like uh, the weather's gotten to them and, and the wood has uh, rotted and about this time while you are looking at this you are going to start to see like this geyser start falling out of the sky and into this hole and you look up and as as far as you can see up here into like the not really the darkness but the twilight you're seeing this water just start falling out of the sky and it's kind of abrupt and then you see this black speck start getting larger and larger and larger and then this huge boom as this large ship has fallen out of the sky and crashed onto this pile of shipwrecks in the middle of this crater. Does it look like a riverboat? Um, you look at it and it looks like a large riverboat and it looks like it's got two masts on it that are, uh, that have cells on them. Um, the cells have a symbol on them that, um, you may or may not recognize. Give me a history check real quick. I'll be honest, in my head, I was like, please, please, ghost pirates, ghost pirates. <laughs> 20. All right, so you would notice, or you would recognize the, the symbol on the um, mast here as a symbol of North Hold. Okay. So I'm guessing those come from the maelstrom or whatever it is in the river. That it's a portal to the Fey. A deadly portal to the Fey. We could have taken a shortcut. A very, very safe <laughs> shortcut. <laughs> um, speaking of which, everybody give me a perception check. 
because you're currently maybe a good 200 yards from this crater. Ooh, yeah, 26. 12. But no, it's just all hits, oh. no whammies. I got two crit fails really. 13. <laughs> all hits, no whammies. All right, so um, everybody here is going to hear what sounds like uh, mid screaming and pain and moaning and it sounds like there's probably like 20 or 30 of them and then it sounds like there's 10 of them and then it goes silent after about a minute hmm. I think they had anything by yeah exactly I... So that's way out of character for Ludio. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, as much as I'd love to investigate such a unique geographical location, um, I, I don't want to get crushed by a ship that might be flying down, and I certainly don't want to see a whole bunch of mutilated sailors who just fell from the sky begging for help. Sounds yeah, like it wouldn't be funny. more. Where's your we could just let them step for a couple of days and get it on the way back. Mm. But uh, actually, wait. If there's, there's people dying, I can feed them to the dagger. Oh, I, that is something you should check into. It's you free here. You, you don't need to kill every single thing you see. It, you already fed your dagger what two days ago? I mean, but. It's it's still kind of hungry, you know. I mean, hey, having too much food is better than having no food. That's true, and I mean, how about you? Can you say I didn't eat two days ago? Come on. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that you should be careful that you don't become the demon that's in the dagger. Unless the demon would be a good ally. Mm-hmm. Is the demon a good ally for Ruin Axis? Judgment call. Alexander. Are you making a- yes, sir. That's me. Give me a uh, charisma saving throw. Eleven with a plus seven modifier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as you're as everybody's talking about this dagger, um, from time to time, there's kind of like this low whisper in the the back of your head that's coming from the dagger, and you've kind of chosen and learned to ignore it for the most part because. It hasn't really been assertive of late. It's kind of like you're in a room and uh, you know a whole bunch of people are talking and you're having a conversation and then you hear somebody say your name and then your ears perk up and you're like, hey, what, what are you guys talking about? That's kind of what's going on right now as the, the demon inside the dagger perks up and loudly inside your head says, Hi, young Feed me. Update, guys. Mr. Demon does want some food, so uh, let's just run over to the to the market on this ship and uh, fill up. I'm just going to duck in the wall, wall, kill somebody. I'll be in and out. It's all good. <laughs> I I really don't think that's a good idea to be listening to a demon. I mean, but if I don't feed the demon, the demon feeds on me. So it's like, uh. Yeah, you remember the thing on his hand? He, he can't have that happen. That doesn't mean he can just go around killing people to feed a demon. A demon If they're already people. dying. Yeah, he's really doing them a service. They're, it's suffering, and he can take yeah. them away from that suffering. That I suffering mean, so is just what? going to the demon. Yeah, yeah, so he's got to eat their souls. Suffering is neither when created nor destroyed. Stuff. It just changes form. It's, it's yeah. Fine. It's suffering entropy. Exactly. Are we having a morality check right now? I, I uh, think so. When did we care? I don't know why the lawful evil character is so concerned about this. <laughs> well, we don't just have to... It's not like there's practice. laws. It's oh. not really a matter of practical concern. He's the only one going whoa, in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not a matter... No, 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 no. Alexander is going to be overcome with this dagger. Juliet is sure of that because she's read she lots of books on demons. Loud? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander is just going to be taken over by the demon if he gives in to its temptations, or the demon's going to manipulate him, and we are going to pay the price. So, okay, so that, that is a real not. concern. In the meantime, let's keep him from being weak. 
and maybe we can you know get rid of the dagger later or you know make use of it mm-hmm. okay but I am not harming a single sailor can okay, I approach cool. uh, I the it. edge of the crater uh sure yeah uh, I want to search like the outskirts like where there's like ruined bits of shape like old stuff if we can find something interesting, anything like a magic queen, a cute amulet, or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so you walk up to the crater, and you start walking around it, looking at these um, these ships, and like I said before, a lot of them are like really old. Um, there are um, three ships here that look fairly new. The one that just fell from the sky, and now you're noticing that, like, the, um, I guess the keel is the, the, the board that runs underneath has snapped. And a lot of the hull here has caved in from the impact. You see a mass that was sticking up from one of the newer ships here has actually impelled that ship because it fell on top of it. Huh. Um, so the two other ships are kind of large river boats. Um, that may, you know, looking at this, you don't really know what the elements are like here in the Feywild, but if this was in the prime material, you would think from the amount of water damage uh, here that they have, may have been here maybe like a year or so. Mm, I'm looking for something more ancient, like um, really old ships, maybe with something um, more exquisite. Okay, so um, basically the way this works is, you know, there's strata going on here. So the older ships, um, from what you can see, are at the bottom, and those are looking at how weathered the, the ship is. So the older ones are at the bottom. But as you walk over here, as you're like kind of making the circuit around this crater, you are going to notice what appears to be cart tracks that maybe look hmm, give me a survival check okay it's a five <laughs> um, nope the, you're noticing cart tracks that um, come up to the, the lip of the crater here that look pretty old and a little weathered and it looks like um, there's maybe like three sets of them some look older than others and they all lead over here to this clearing to the west um, you're also going to notice that there are some footprints that lead down into the crater and then back up um, from the mm-hmm. kind of dried mud that's here and you're noticing that um, after this ship fell through the torrent of water that was coming from the sky has stopped after about um, a minute or so. Mm, okay. So there's um, kind of this puddle like gathering towards the bottom of this that you can see where there's some water that's starting to create some uh, some muddy areas in the bottom of this crater um, that you can see this mud um, that isn't covered by shipwrecks. So, two things. One, do I see fish I can bring to Alunidas? And second, um, know any, like, ancient cool ships with some I, skeleton inside them? I mean, without crawling down into the, to the crater to investigate some of these ships, I mean, you don't really know. You're, you know, you could hmm. see the ships, basically the exterior. You can see some skeletons on some of these that look ancient. Um, but without, like, getting down there and investigating the ships, you don't really know. Anyway, I can get a ancient scroll for some purpose. Ancient scroll? Skull. Like a human skull. Skull. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you oh, wanted to go down no. there and get one, yeah. Hannah and Anna are going to start fighting over skulls. I would like to <laughs> cast a level 2 spell of uh, invisibility and just slide down into the crater. Okay. I'm gonna go in and try to investigate, find something interesting, 
and maybe like get a school on the way. Okay. Um, not really having any trouble, you know, finding a skeleton. I mean, you basically got your pick here. You're seeing. Uh, give me a medicine check. Okay. A wonderful seven. You're not an expert on skulls, but you're finding, like, different shapes and sizes here that you think um, maybe belong to, you know, humans and maybe half-elves. Um, you can't really see the ears, so you don't know. You're finding some smaller skeletons that you think are maybe dwarfs or really husky human children. <laughs> you don't know. Um, <laughs> Any but, uh, dragonborn skulls? Um, yeah, you actually find one dragonborn skull. I'm and take most that of one. it, most of it's intact because the the scales um, here are kind of dried out. So like the flesh underneath is kind of uh, leatherized, and uh, you're mm -hmm. seeing some uh, scales here. Uh, this is the skull okay. of a bronze dragonborn. I'm gonna take my sword, chop that off, take that with me, and look for anything uh, valuable just for a bit. Uh, okay, how long are you wanting to do this? Um, gonna be like 20 minutes, I guess. Uh, okay, um, that would give you enough time to like, uh, pick one ship. Roll me a, uh, roll me a d20. A d20? Yeah, roll me just a, a d straight up d20. Not an investigation check? Uh oh, looks like he's rolling to see if you get landed on by a ship. Okay, so um, you pick out one of these boats here that appears to be older. It's a river boat and it's got a single mast. Give me an investigation check. Uh, not 20, but minus one. <laughs> okay, so you start investigating this, uh, this river boat here and you're looking around and it looks like the, the people on this ship had died and it looks like some like maybe like a, an arm um, had been like torn off or something like that but it doesn't look like it came from the impact um, you look around and you're not finding anything that's like jewelry or necklaces or armor or even weapons which is really odd that you wouldn't even find like a spear or an halberd or you know even things like say like a kitchen knife or a meat cleaver on the ship that they would cook with. Um, I'm gonna yell out loud for the rest of the party to get around me. Like um, guys, come here quick. I'm going to go up there to the hole look up in the sky and dart down into the hole into the boat where Vic is. Alright. Just me, not my car. Okay. Also, um, can I recognize like what kind of uh, bite marks on the arm that is? Like, uh, it doesn't appear to be what kind of bite creature? marks or anything like that. It looks like, uh, give me a medicine check. Okay. It's a six. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't know how this arm was removed. Okay. What's up? What? 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 What's going on? What? Hmm, it seems like somebody already looted this place. And it seems like somebody mutilated some of these bodies after the fact. Or he I could have been shaving and think. landed on the razor when the boat fell. Or he was cut down by something that either lives here or near here. Well, this would be a good source of food for any of the vicious sort of creatures that eat meat. Yeah. We should but probably it doesn't get seem eaten. Okay, then somebody could have had the same idea we did and come into loot. It's, again, a good source of wealth. But yeah, we should get away from here. Yeah, especially when we're separated. It's not a good idea. Then why did you separate us? God. I well... Know. <laughs> I could handle myself, but I'm still worried about the rest. I do need you a lot for a while. Yes, yes, that's very sweet. 
Let's go. Thank you. I like to think I'm very nice for a drow. I mean, not that drows aren't nice. You get my gist. Yes. Uh, Kevin, because yes. we're in perpetual twilight, I've been doing some research. One or two vampire spawn and a small or large pack of wolves would be a difficult encounter for us, and thus we could fight the sparkle pyres from Twilight. <laughs> oh, I'll take that under consideration. <laughs> All right. John is now in charge of making encounters for us. <laughs> no. I want to kill Edward Cullen. I do want a vampire head. Wouldn't that just be a regular head? With big teeth. Yeah, with sharp, pointy fangs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you know anything about this coal sub market? And they glow Come under on. black light. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that a thing? It is now. They glow under fair light <laughs> with cool patterns. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I'll put that in the monster <laughs> menu. All right, so let's uh, switch over to Alexander. So, Alexander, you have cast invisibility on yourself and you have slid down into this crater. Uh, what are you doing? I am going to meander my way to the new ship that just fell in okay. uh, and try and find an entrance inside. Okay, so you slide down to the, the bottom here, and there's some mud uh, here, and you're, you're making tracks even though you're still invisible. There is wood littered everywhere from these ships, and you are going to like move around and squeeze between um, some of these river boats here to try to get up to the ship that has just fallen. You're going to climb on top of basically half of a ship here and back down the other side. But eventually you're able to make it out in the center of this uh, large crater where this ship is. And as you get closer, you are going to see that the, the bottom of the ship here is just, it's ruined. Kill's broken. Um, the hull is damaged beyond the repair. I mean, it fell out of the sky and, and hit the ground here. Um, you are going to see some um, riding near the um, bow of the ship on the side that uh, you would be able to read. It's in common. You think it's the ship's name? And it's called the River Tempest. So, uh, you make it to the ship. Are you climbing on board? Yes, sir. All right. So, um, there's not really, like, a, a ladder or a rope that's over the, the side here, obviously, because uh, they were just <laughs> going down river and weren't talking or putting down an anchor. Um, but you are able to get towards the stern of the ship here and find some some footholds in the back where they have some uh, some ropes and some of the uh, the bumpers that you put on the side of the ship to um, uh, dock it. Uh, give me a athletics check. Yep. Do you mean acrobatics? Oh wait, never mind. I'm a goofball. Four. <laughs> So you get up about halfway uh, up and you lose your your footing and you <laughs> fall and get your leg caught in one of the ropes. Uh, give me a uh, give me a strength check. Seventeen. All right. So uh, you fall and you're kind of hanging there by like uh, your knee inside of one of these ropes and you're able to. To reach up and grab the rope and pull yourself back up and uh, make it onto the stern of the ship. As you uh, make your way on the ship and crawl over the railing, you are going to look out over the uh, the deck of the ship, and it's basically carnage. You are going to see about ten bodies um, here on the deck of the ship. Give me a uh, give me a perception check or an investigation check. Investigation. Eleven. All right. So you start going around checking these bodies, and um, you find like three that kind of uh, stick out to you. 
um, that their bodies don't look as mangled as the others, uh, give me a medicine check. I'm... You start going around and, like, checking to see if one of these bodies is, uh, seem to have any life signs and they're not breathing. Uh, give me another medicine check as you check another one of these bodies. Eight. You check another one of these bodies and it doesn't appear to be breathing either. You think, uh, this half-elf's probably dead? Double... Uh, double ones. Double Snake crit eyes. fails. Uh, you check this third body, and you thought it was in pretty good shape before, but as you get closer to it, it appears to have one of the deck planks that had uh, popped up and gone through its chest. And uh, as you get closer, you see that um, part of the jagged board is sticking out through the uh, the back of its shirt and see where uh, blood is starting to pull. Okay. Uh, do I see an entrance to a lower deck? Uh, you give me a perception check. Six on perception. You look around and you are seeing like where you think would be an entrance of a ship. You're not seeing anything, but uh, it's probably because uh, the mast has... Uh, kind of snapped in one of the crossbars and the cell has uh, covered this portion of the deck. Okay. Uh, can you I can look around check. to see if you there's any alternate ways to get in? Uh, well, yeah, you could go over and check by where you think that that should be like the, the hold down to the the hold. Okay, I'll go over there. Alright, give me a... Uh, well... Just, uh, you go over and you don't even check me to check for this. You start moving the cell away and you are going to find a hole that goes down into the hold. You look down there and it appears to be even more bodies. I will make my way down. So you make your way down into the hold of the ship and you're going to see probably about seven bodies. Uh, give me a investigation check or per, uh, perception either one whichever is higher seven okay so out of these seven bodies they look pretty mangled but there's maybe two here that aren't in terrible shape give me a medicine check 12 on the first one all right so you come to this first one and you kneel down beside it and it appears to be a half elf woman and you get down on your knees and you get beside her and you lay your hand on her back and you feel this really shallow breathing and then you take your uh, your hand and put it near her uh, uh, juggler to feel for a, a pulse and you're feeling this really weak uh, pulse I will take out my dagger and slit her throats okay so you take the dagger and you slit her throat and that blackish purplish uh, smoky tendrils appear around the blade and as you cut through the dagger starts sucking in the blood and then you hear this in the back of your head <sighs> I would like to move on to the second body that I noticed uh, okay give me a medicine check Six. Um, you get down and you feel for a uh, for breathing or a pulse, and you're not feeling anything. Okay. Um, I would like to go further in. Is there any other like uh, rooms or something that's noticeable? Um, you are seeing the hole here, or the hold here, where there is uh, some barrels and crates and some sacks, and you are seeing an area. Um, towards the stern of the hold that there is a door I would like to go towards the door okay so um, you go towards the door and uh, it appears to be ajar okay I would like to actually Kevin for purposes of invisibility did the um, like the slicing your throat count as like an attack 
Oh yeah, you, you're not invisible anymore. Okay, uh, I'll just open the door. Okay, so you open the door and um, it's really dark in here. I mean, it was dark down in the hold, but there was a little light coming from outside. Uh, but you really can't see inside here. Okay, I would like to take out a uh, a torch and light it. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> you take out the torch in your uh, tinder box and you, you light it, and now you're getting a uh, glow here inside the room. And this room in here appears to be kind of like a like um, not barracks, but uh, where the the bunks are, where they sleep, and there appears to be about six hammocks that are strung here but of those six uh, two of them have broken and it appears that there are two bodies on the floor here that um, one was sleeping over the other one and when they crashed the hammocks uh, snapped and one fell into the ch uh, the one below so there's uh, two bodies here one okay, appears to be they... a human and another one appears to be a dwarf Okay, uh, I would like to check the human for signs of life. Medicine check. Okay, that's an 18. You check the, the body uh, on top of the other one that was uh, sleeping, and uh, you feel for some breathing or a pulse, and you're not feeling anything. Okay, I would like to check the dwarf. All right, medicine check. 16. Um, you start feeling for some breathing, and uh, as soon as you put your hand on the dwarf, it reflexively moves and turns over and stares at you and gasps for air. I would like to attempt to slice his throat. <laughs> okay. This uh, dwarf, it's you're now seeing it's a, a man that's roughly dressed in like this... Uh, sailor garb that the uh, the riverboat workers uh, wear. It's basically wearing like a burlap uh, shirt and some leather breeches. Gas for air and uh, looks at you and kind of like croaks out, help! Help! As you pull out the dagger and <laughs> stick it into his throat. Uh, roll me an attack. Damage or to hit? Uh, to hit. 17 to hit. All right. So, um, he like reaches up for you and like tries to grab your shoulder asking for help as you take this, uh, dagger in your hand and stick it into the side of his throat. And then he just starts gurgling blood. And then the, the smoky tendrils wrap around his throat and, uh, the blood that was spilling out of his throat starts getting sucked into the dagger and you hear this uh, satiated, yes, pineapple. Oh my! You're gonna feel this uh, kind of. The best way to describe it is some like warmth and and vigor and power rush through uh, up your arm and into your chest. So uh, you're gonna get a plus one to uh, attack and damage for the next uh, 24 hours. So, uh, anything else you want to do down here? I thought that there's four for some reason, but I guess there's two, so I'll uh, leave that room and just okay. do a quick uh, glance through to see if there's anything, any other bodies of notice before I leave. Give me a uh, investigation check. Seven. So, you look through the, the bottom here, and you're not really seeing any more that appear to be like somewhat intact <laughs> the ones that you did think uh, may have been you know, survived the initial fall um, you've either dispatched or you didn't feel any breathing you go back up to the deck and you start moving these cells around and you're going to find a, a, a human woman who was uh, underneath one of these uh, cells and she appears to be finely dressed, more so than anyone else on this boat. But um, she's wrecked. She has a, uh, a piece of uh, mast had fallen across beam, 
and uh, when the cell had filled and there was a, a piece of rigging that was on this cross beam that had gone straight through her back and into the deck okay um, I would like to attempt to use speak uh, speak with dead on the lady with uh, actually I should probably use it on someone on the top deck huh because they would probably know more than some captive or you said it was a holding cell right no no she was she was underneath a cell that had fallen a piece of the the crossbar um, from one of these masks that the one of the lower cells was attached to had fallen and a piece of rigging from that crossbar uh, went through her back that makes more sense words mean things uh, I would like to use speak with dead on her okay I posted it in the discord chat uh, so basically you gain a, res- a semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of your choice within range allowing it to answer the questions you pose a uh, corpse must still have a mouth and can't be undead the spell fails that the corpse has uh, of the target has been dead within the last 10 days well it has already been a target and failed within the last 10 days until the spell ends you can ask the corpse up to five questions the corpse knows only what it knew in life including the languages it knew um, usually brief cryptic and repetitive answers are given and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer if you are hostile to it or it recognizes you as an enemy so what do you want to ask uh what happened to the ship you roll this corpse over so you could actually like face it and uh, it's there on the deck and you know as you cast this spell you're going to see her lungs fill with air and she starts to to breathe out and speak without like her mouth moving and she says I don't know I was so scared and the ship started spinning and I looked out and all I could see was this this water up above us as we fell and spun around this hole faster and faster what was the goal of your ship? I was traveling from from North Hold on my way to Lake Town. Was there any valuable merchandise on, on the ship? None. I don't know what they were carrying. Only know what I had with me, which was of some little means. Was it a ship for travel or a transportation ship? I think they carry cargo, but I book travel. That's, uh, is that three or four? I think that was four. Okay, so you get one more. What's she like to do in bed? (laughs) Who was the captain? I only know his first name and not much else about him. His name was Wormfield. Okay, and uh, with that I assume that the just kind of like loses a semblance of life and drops. Yeah, so the, the breath that it had taken in was expended. You know, you just realized you asked her all these questions and didn't even ask her who she was. She's dead. How important can she be? She was the princess. Like a <laughs> huge kingdom. You would have got her like a billion gold. <laughs> Uh, okay, I would like to start making my way off of the ship. All right. You start to climb down the, the back, and you're going to notice that um, Vic and um, Luno have started um, making their way up the uh, side of this crater here. And uh, also give me a perception check. You got it. 18. So uh, as you're looking over there at Vic and Luno as they cl- climb towards the lip of this crater here. You're going to notice some uh, dust that is coming up from the the path um, to the west here where there's the clearing and it appears to be getting closer. It's uh, over here where I'm peeing and uh, you wait a few more minutes and you're going to notice that it appears to be a 
humanoid on a cart with uh, two horses coming closer to the crater. Can you ping that again, please? I missed that. Over here, on this side of the map. We're not seeing a ping. It might be too zoomed in. Hmm. No, I can see the whole map, I'm just oh. not seeing a ping. The same. It's uh, to the there right of the crater. Wait, I saw I'm the brown one. I'm the blue one. Kevin's supposed to be blue. Uh, seeing this guy coming forward, I want to yell out to my party members and say like, Hey, guys, there's uh, horses coming from that way, and I'm po- pointing towards where the dust is. Let's see, we came from the south. Yeah, over here to the southeast. And over here is also where you saw the tracks that were leading to and from the crater. They were coming from the west? Towards yes. the west? Okay. Shane. Um, start bluffing them. Tell them we're from the companions. That might be the people for the, the boots, protectors, people. That's Maybe. such a bad idea. Alexander, Alexander. Well, he's really good at lying, or... right? We could just I am. I'm going to start making my way towards them. Uh, you're going to start making your way towards the uh, the person in the cart? Yep. All right. So um, you climb down off this ship and start making your way through the shipwrecks here. And uh, you either meet or pass up uh, Vic and Luna as they uh, climb out of this crater. And you make it up to the lip. And by this time, the cart has made it to about... Uh, maybe 50 feet or so from the uh, crater's lip and the horses stop and then you see this uh, figure that's cloaked stand up in the cart and look down into the crater as he sees you uh, cresting the lip he's gonna yell at you get out of my crater you damn scabbing prospect stealing war holers what do you mean? We just saw the ship fall down. We're not too familiar with these parts. This is my hole. Everybody knows it's Prospector Bill's hole. Hmm. Would you like to uh, trade, Mr. Bill? Trade for what? I don't know. Gold, valuable. Show me what you have. I got all the gold and valuables I need. They're down in the hole. I saw the ship fall, that's my ship. How about um, something more exotic? How about you get the hell out of my hole? How about you watch your mouth? Can I roll intimidation? Uh, you can try. Hey. <laughs> He's gonna laugh at you. He said, well, look here, missy. I've been dealing with people coming out of this hole for longer than you've probably been alive. Now why don't you just get up out my hole, jump on your horses or your shoes or your feet or whatever, and and make it on out of here. What do you get from the ships? Whatever's in the ships. That's mine. Everybody knows it's mine. What do you do with it? Well, I don't see how that's your business. And who's everybody? Well, the elves and the sprites and the bully logs and the I fake want creatures. Names. Names? Yeah, who? Well, there's Julie the Int. There's uh, Daryl the Elf. He's been through here a couple times. Haven't seen him a lot lately, but... Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have to explain myself to you. Maybe you do. I mean, you want to prove it's your hole, right? Everybody knows this is Prospector Bill's hole. Yeah, and I'll check if you tell me who's been through here, and then I'll live it all. Listen, I don't have to explain myself to you. And at that point, he is going to uh, reach underneath the uh, this cover in the back of this wagon, pull out a crowbar, and jump down off the cart and start walking towards you. Yeah, that is true. But if you do explain yourself to me, I can very easily spread the word, and less people would bother you well ain't nobody bothers me because nobody else needs to come near this hole they know everything in this hole is mine so you why don't you just just hop on your horse and go back to wherever you came from maybe we need a change of management um 
can I try and try intimidate him again when I draw my sword out? What are um, you doing, Vakala? Why are you messing with the prospector? I want to see, like, if we can find something good. <laughs> but this is prospector. This is prospector's hole. What do we need from the hole? I don't know. Gold. It's less about the hole, money. more about the prospector. And it's more about, like, yeah, he's at it, dude. Come on, I'm a drow. I have to. <laughs> Uh, do our, you have something in particular that you want from the whole Fikala that you have to like mess with the prospector here? No, but I don't like his attitude. Okay. Uh, give me a in. So you're pulling out your your great sword and you're trying to intimidate him. Yeah. All right. So what do you say to him? Tell them like uh, change of man management. Okay. Uh, in your intimidation check was an eight. The last one. <laughs> All right, so uh, he is going to jump down off this cart, and uh, he's wearing this uh, this gray um, like cloak and hood that uh, has seen better days. It's pretty worn and it's dirty. And now that you see him jump down, he's wearing these uh, like dirty, rough clothes, and uh, he pulls back his hood. And now you get a good look at this person it is a human who appears to be about maybe in his uh, early 60s um, he um, kind of has uh, a, like scars and leathered skin and he's got this really long gray hair and really long gray beard and he's going to pull out that crowbar and he's going to march right up to you and get in your face Vicalia and he's going to take his finger and point it inches away from your nose. And he was like, don't tell me about no management or how me, tell me how to run my hole. Who do you think yeah, you well, are? For a prospector with so much gold and valuables, you seem rather poor. So, yeah, not much of a prospector, are you? I'm not poor, I'm eccentric. What? That's just an excuse for bad fashion and manners and hygiene all right uh, all right at this point you are getting a smell of him and uh, it it smells like he hasn't bathed in maybe a year oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. Got, guys maybe maybe there's a different way that we can handle this uh mr bill prospector um, bill my apologies mr prospector bill uh can we? Where do you take the, the stuff that you find in this hole? Well, I don't see how that's in your business. I, I'm just curious because we're kind of lost and we are looking for a, a major area. We actually are looking for some people that we're following through here. We, we're trying to find them and we lost track. Well, not many people come through here. I, I make you a deal. You leave my hole alone. I'll tell you, tell you what I saw. Mm. That deal. seems okay. like an excellent deal. All right, all right. I get the message. Shake on it, and uh, he spits in his hand and holds it out for uh, you to uh, shake, Talia. Talia's gonna spit in her hand and and shake his. <laughs> Cause why not be gross? He says, "All right, well." I saw a group of them elves come through here maybe about a uh, week ago. I get maybe, I don't know, time's funny here. Let's just say I, I slept maybe seven or eight times. Saw a group of them on uh, uh, walking through here in the forest and, and walking up here towards them ruins. Hmm. Uh, which direction? Uh, up there to the northeast. He points across the, uh, the way, across the crater to this, uh, another path that you're seeing here to the uh the, to the, the northeast path. yeah i don't okay. take to the mills none bunch of bunch of hoarded bunch of bastards if you ask me i don't talk to them exactly. but i saw it good man yeah <laughs> i love how the elves are commenting on this it's it's entertaining um, i'm a drow that's different <laughs> you got the pointed ears it's the same thing it's not this. See, they so came up. They came up here, try to claim a hole too. And you know what I told him? I said, I said this hole 
took took away my life, took away my friends, and and trapped me here in this godforsaken twilight land. So I claimed the whole, told them to piss off, and for the most part, they leave me alone. I can get you out of this hole. I mean, this place in general. On the way back, yeah. So he looks at you as you say that and thinks for a long second in his eyes narrow and he says, Man, no thanks. I don't need your help. If you want to stay here or huddle sad with your hole, you can go ahead. Well, that suits me just fine. Now, I held up my part of the deal, so why don't you all just jump on your horses and leave me alone? Sounds like a plan, right, sir. Thank you so much. Let's let's get going, guys. One question. Hold on. Have you seen them carrying boots of a sort? Well, they were wearing boots. I don't know about... I mean, who carries boots around? You either wear them or you don't. Okay. Unless they're mighty fine boots that you some down, sometimes fall down in his... Uh, find down in the hole here that uh, people aren't using <laughs> anymore. What are the ruins? <laughs> What are those? What do you know? I only been up there once and uh, <laughs> saw some stuff, and uh, that was uh, it was enough for me never to go back. Stuff. Yeah, stuff. Weird lights. Like. Oh, mm. I see. Thank you. That Bill. there's uh there's stuff out in that woods uh, moving around. Uh, mm. I ain't I haven't seen what it is, but. I mean, well, y'all just go on up here. You find out what it is. Have fun. Knock yourselves out. Thank you. Okay. You Thank got you a prospector, Bill. Prospector Bill. Bill. Bye, Bill. He just uh, just gonna spit on the ground <laughs> and nod at you like you know, <laughs> get the hell away from my hole. <laughs> oh, like prospector Bill's so hole. Honestly, like. Failed intimidation checks is the best. <laughs> like half the time, I hope I fail. So this entire time, Talia basically has just been like laying back on Estelle, her her war pony, and like taking a nap, basically. So she's just <laughs> gonna sit up and and head up the towards the path that he uh, he pointed them towards. Okay. All right. So you start to walk away and go and gather your horses and. You notice that uh, Prospector Bill over here has uh, started setting up some stakes and uh, appears to be some sort of uh, pulley apparatus that's got like this uh, wooden, small wooden sled slash cart that he's lowering down into the hole. And uh, as he works, uh, you notice that he's got his eye on you the whole time. But you, is it like a stink eye, or is it just like... It's just m- keeping an eye on you, making sure that you're not trying to uh, trick him or get down in his hole. Gotcha, okay. Um, okay. So, uh, you go gather your horses, and are you making it up to this uh, other path? Uh, yep, we're headed yep. up there. Yep, exactly. Alright, so you gather your horses in the cart... And you start traveling pretty much due east at this point. Um, you're going to come across uh, some hills, and you come towards the top of uh, one of the larger ones here. And uh, from this vantage point, you look down into what appears to be kind of a uh, town um, that had uh, like uh, stone walls. It appears that uh, it has fallen into ruin. So all around it, um, it's a really abrupt change after you, like, you're on top of this hill and you look down and the, the pine trees that have been healthy all the way around have died all the way around this, uh, this ruined town. You see these stone structures that are falling apart and they've got kind of this gray moss on top of uh, the structures and, and hanging down off the walls. And it looks... Uh, Looks pretty weird. You, everybody, give me a perception check. Fifteen. Nineteen. Eleven. Eighteen. Everybody Alexander except for out of twenty-two. It's an auditory meeting, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> you 
look down in here and you're seeing that the the path runs uh, down off of this hill and right through this ruined uh, town and um, as you're you're surveying this area you are going to see some faint bluish white lights uh, appear in some of these uh, ruined streets and float inside and outside of buildings slowly and I think that's probably a pretty good place to end it right there Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dungeons & Debacles podcast. If I could ask a halfling size favor, give us a 5-star rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way to support us. New episodes come out every Monday, so make sure to check your podcast app. If you have an idea to make the podcast better, tell us about it on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out our website to see all the maps, lore, and characters at DungeonsAndDebaclesPodcast.com. And now a word from our fantasy sponsor. Show your mother how much you really care this Mother's Day by treating her to the Mother's Day brunch at the Silver Glade Inn. It only comes once a year, so why not treat the one who gave you life to a feast of epic proportions? Nothing says I love you like a Mother's Day all-you-can-eat buffet. Treat her to fresh, never-salted or magically preserved seafood from Bright Bay. Fish, clams, crabs, bacon, eggs, flapjacks, and so much more. All this in the elegant atmosphere of the Silver Glade Inn, located in the government district of Kala. All this for only five gold. When you care enough to give your mom the very best. Silver Glade Inn. The music you heard on this episode was Fairy Tale Waltz, Enter the Maze, Water Prelude, Crowd Hammer, and Serpentine Trek by Kevin McLeod in Competech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. CreativeCommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 3.0.